why be the esports champion of just one F1 2000 game when you can be the esports champion of two F1 2000 games? Unfortunately, my esports success has come at a cost. My dominating victory in F1 2000 caused Ferrari to dig through my Twitter history and discovered that I follow at least one sex worker on Twitter, and despite my insistence that by day she is a nice, quiet Polish HR girl, Ferrari was having none of that and have parted ways with me after just a single race. Not only that, but they have taken my expensive Logitech G29 setup and I'll be forced to compete on an Xbox One controller. There may be an upside to this, as this is a green eSport series with no fuel consumption. My carbon footprint will be reduced by playing on a gamepad. This is at least what my sponsors have told me to say. I'm proud to announce that Williams eSports have signed me after being terminated by Ferrari, believing that everyone deserves a second chance to redeem themselves. Twelve people liked this Williams eSports tweet six of which are esports organizers and other drivers in the esports series, so I believe I am heading in the right direction. Anyways, I'll be trying to redeem myself at the Australian Grand Prix, which F1 just raced at uh, about a week and a half ago. This is of course the OG Melbourne GP layout, which most of you are familiar with as the track remained pretty much unchanged for the better part of 20 years until 2022. It's a really fun, fast track that's almost like if you added more chicanes to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. I'm excited to present the 1987 Buick LeSabre. It's the latest addition to the iRacing NASCAR Legends series. Along with recent updates to aerodynamics and performance, the 1987 cars are as fun as ever to drive. From Daytona to Martinsville, you can experience what it's like to be behind the wheel of one of these legendary rides. See you on the track. So what did six additional months of development get us from F1 2000, which was released in March of 2000, to F1 Championship Season 2000, which came out in, I believe, September? And the answer is quite a lot, actually. Uh, they overhauled the UI. You now have your choice of tire compounds like you saw when we first load into the race weekend. You can skip ahead five minutes in the qualifying session, which is really, really convenient. And you do have a few new setup options. Uh, first of all, as I cycle through here, I'm mostly running the same setup I did for Indianapolis. You now have a rev limiter you can adjust, as well as the size of the side pod radiators. Smaller radiators, less drag, you go quicker. You also have a completely separate aerodynamic screen. You can fuck with the front and rear wings, as well as the ride height, and new for this game, a rear diffuser. Because it's the year 2000, and this is a mass market Formula 1 game, more diffuser equals more fast. Let's go to qualifying. In true esports fashion, our qualifying lap will be a very liberal interpretation of the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit. EA Sports has very clearly not prepared for a future in which time travel exists, and esports losers will revisit their game 20 years later with the sole purpose of seeing how much they can cut every single corner on the racetrack. I, however, am that loser, and the PS1 version of the Australian Grand Prix circuit is now my canvas. In all seriousness, the game really doesn't give a shit about how egregiously you cut certain corners as long as you're not just skipping the entire corner complex because it will DQ your lap. But beyond that, pretty much anything else is fair game, so like I'm not even trying for some of these corners, which makes this track really really fast and arguably more fun than driving the actual layout. Because in certain spots, in certain corners, it actually drives like the 2022 layout. Of course, this is 100% not by design and EA just made a really shit lazy cut track system, but that's not my problem. What's this thing like to drive on an analog pad? Because I am using an Xbox One controller, that's not a joke, with the analog sticks turned on. Uh, it's actually not bad. Uh, there's still the dead zone problem that I mentioned in F1 2000. It's just much less of a nuisance on a stick. The real serious reason why I'm not using a Logitech G29 for this gameplay 
uh, is because for whatever reason I couldn't get my break input to register 100% in this game only. This is the only game I've had this problem when using the NGCon plugin for Duck Station. So in practicing off camera, I'd go into braking zones, push the brake pedal basically through the floor and still go shooting off the track. So controller it is. Anyway, a very respectable lap with our first outing for Williams Esports is actually gonna put us on the pole. So while Ferrari Esports seems to be obsessed with who I follow or don't follow on Twitter and what they may do in their spare time, I have now taken the fledgling Williams Esports to the front of the grid, which is very, very satisfying. Again, from F1 2000 to F1 Championship Season 2000, EA ported over most of the game from one release to the other, reworking the menu artwork and the UI elements to match what you'd find in Madden 2001, FIFA 01, and then NHL 2001. Anyway, we're on the pole by a tenth, although for expert difficulty and playing on a controller, it's still pretty impressive. We're ahead of Villeneu in seventh by 1.4 seconds, so we've done our job for the most part. Pre-race intro looked like got reworked a bit from F1 2000. There are a few more graphical elements. For example, they're going to show the track map here, which I really don't need because, let's be honest, we all know these tracks by now. You get the same safety car scene as you saw in F1 2000, which we're going to skip, and then the same kind of starting grid layout that shows all the cars pacing around on the formation lap. Again, I've touched on this before, but I really appreciate when old games do this because it kind of gives every race you do, you know, a certain atmosphere to it beyond just, hey, you're just doing a random single race. It makes you feel like you're part of an event. And to cater to the esports autists that literally didn't exist at this point in time, it actually shows you on the starting grid what driving assists you've turned off. So nobody can call me out in my YouTube comments and claim that I'm cheating the game or driving with all the assists on. Very forward thinking by EA. Anyway, skipping past the opening few corners of the race because of the frame rate problems at Plague, F1 2000 as well as F1 CS 2000, I talked about them in my previous video, we are on the backstretch here at Melbourne, lap 1, P5, following Jacques Villeneuve in the BAR Honda, and we are about to blow the doors off of him, probably because Jacques is most likely driving on keyboard because he was known for doing crazy shit like that back in the golden age of sim racing. Not even kidding about that, uh, back in the day when the hobby was still growing, uh, Villeneuve was known for still rocking a gamepad even as people started to transition more and more to desk-mounted racing wheels. Because so much time has passed, people really don't understand just how good Jacques Villeneuve was as a driver and as a sim racer back in the day. At least, this is partially replicated in this F1 Championship Season 2000 esports event, and we are chasing down the McLaren Shadow Project teammates of David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen with Villeneuve running in fifth, and I believe that's Michael Schumacher leading the race. Now, while this whole video has been one long shit post, uh, we should probably touch on what's happening in front of us here. The AI in this game is like surprisingly competent. Compared to F1 2000, the previous video I uploaded in the series where I just walked the field uh, at Indianapolis, uh, I'm just kind of holding down fourth. I throw a nice nasty dive bomb on David Coulthard to get into third, but the AI are generally running the same pace I am, and we're kind of just holding steady here two laps into the race, which is really interesting to see in a game this complex, with tracks this complex, with this many setup options, and at a rather primitive time in sim racing. These guys aren't, you know, blowing the doors off me. Unfortunately, that's about to change here in Sector 2, because unlike the default setups EA have provided the AI cars with, uh, I trimmed the car out a shitload, basically like the lowest ride height I could get away with, the smallest radiator side pods, the engine limiter cranked all the way up, as well as, you know, a max rear diffuser, because more diffuser is more fast. Catching up to Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher here, we're gonna go for a crazy dive bomb on Hakkinen. He's gonna retaliate by reporting all my pictures for porn on Facebook and try and get me banned, but that leaves just us and Michael Schumacher at the end of lap two fighting for first place. And in true esports fashion, I'll display a complete lack of racecraft, throw the car up the inside, send the car into a drift which the tire model really doesn't allow, and perform a slide job on Michael Schumacher for the lead. This is what Ferrari gets for sacking me after one race because of who I follow on Twitter. And because this is esports, nothing happened for the rest of the race, which made all 84 viewers on Twitch extremely bored. Come home with the W for Williams Esports. And I get to prepare to mint a second batch of NFTs to commemorate this first win here at Australia for Williams Esports. I am extremely excited about the opportunity and can promise I will not be planning a rug pull after the project goes live. At least, not within the first 24 hours.